everybody it's Sharon here welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time oh my gosh I am so excited I'm actually doing my first video my first sorry my first crafting video for 2021 and I'm so excited to be back so I mentioned in my last video where I shared the papers that I wanted to use in this video that I have a project in mind to kickstart my crafting year and it was also to ease me back into the crafting and in particular the videoing because as you know I haven't videoed for a little while so I've been following a lot of crafters online via YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, I'm there. Um, and Anne Brooks is running a, oh gosh, I meant to write down her hashtag. I think it's 52 tags handmade. So hashtag 52 tags handmade. And it's actually a slow stitching project. And I've mentioned before to my viewers that I'm not a sewer. I've never, I never was interested in sewing when I was younger. Um, I've never been confident with it or comfortable with it. And I saw this challenge and I've been watching a few of the crafters who are participating. And I've decided it might be a fun way to ease me into it. Now, a couple of things you need to know. I'm not at this stage planning on doing any of my slow stitching on camera. Mostly because I'm not comfortable or confident with it. But I will share with you as I go what I create and fingers crossed it doesn't end up a disaster um, and who knows by the end of the 52 weeks yes I do have a couple of weeks to catch up on but that's okay um, I'm hoping by the end of the 52 weeks or as I progress toward the 52 week mark I will start to feel more comfortable and confident with hand sewing so so that's my aim and I wanted to give a huge shout out to Steph from Junk With Steph because I approached her um, and told her what I was hoping to do and asked her if I could use some of her neutral kits to make the tags, which is what I would like to do. I follow Rachel at Roxy Creations and she made her tags and I don't have any shipping tags pre-made. I I don't buy them I never have so when I saw Rachel making them I was like I really want to do that but I didn't want really busy backgrounds or busy as in lots of different colors I wanted a neutral tone and I don't know whether that was partly sparked by the, the first week's challenge which is white so when I saw the first week's video, I decided that I wanted a white background, which was what steered me towards the Romantica Arts papers. If you haven't seen my previous video, I will link it in the description below, but I shared all of the kits that I have for this project, so I'm not going to share them in this video. But the Romantica Arts is a white damask paper set basically and that's when I went oh I really think I want to stick to the neutral tone so Steph at Junk with Steph has kindly allowed me to utilize her neutral tone kits and I cannot wait to get started so what I'm hoping to do in this video is do some collaging I thought it was a great way to kickstart me back into crafting with you all and videoing and I have here and it's a, an encyclopedia it's a children's Britannica encyclopedia and I have literally just taken it out of its cupboard now before I started videoing you can see I did accidentally cut through the cover the cover is actually covered in contact which doesn't make me happy but I was hoping to rescue it um, this particular part of the spine was actually attached to the paper so there was no way around it really and I may still be able to salvage that cover I haven't decided yet but I wanted to show you 
The papers in this particular encyclopedia are quite matte. There's not a lot of shine on them. So I wanted something that was larger um, for collaging on. And I think this will work wonderfully. And the signatures are sewn in. So when it was actually closed, before I started cutting into it, you could barely see the stitches. They were so tightly bound. Um, but I lifted just this edge here and it started to reveal the stitches so I cut into the stitches slowly and then worked my way down very very slowly and steadily with the um, Stanley knife so I've just used oops if I can get it out my trusty little Stanley knife here to cut this out and once I cut that out I turned it over and sorry once I cut that side I turned it over and I started on this side and I actually just if we can pretend that this is still in the signature or still in the cover I grabbed hold of the cover and I pulled it really hard away from myself and it pulled the stitching it revealed the stitching and I was able to just loop them out with my all to get the stitching out and what that has done whoops what that has done has revealed the signatures inside and I did actually open it up to make sure that it was the way I thought it would be um, so the signatures are actually stitched into this which means that in each signature there is a center if I can find it There is a center which pulls out which means it's a large sheet of paper just waiting for us to collage so oops i put my finger through that one i actually have decided that i might keep the papers in that signature i'm not not sure whether i, I kind of like the column look of the text so i'm not sure whether i'll use them as collage papers rather than to collage on. So I just want to take out a few. I'm obviously not going to do a lot on camera because I have taken some time to explain to you what I'm doing. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is that I just wanted to press these where the stitching goes through where the hole has been punched it's a little bit it feels very thick when you touch it and it's because the papers have been bolted together they've been punched all at the same time but if I flatten that out with my nail so I'm just using the back of my thumbnail it just eases those back into place and I, I think once we start collaging over it that will hold that in place so there shouldn't be too much texture there I'm, I'm thinking um okay I wanted to start with the white because the first the first week's challenge in the tag making challenge for and books is white I want my first tag to be white so I'm going to start with the Romantica Arts papers I really really love that one don't mind that one either I'm just reminding myself what's here whoops struggle Oh, I do like that okay I'm going to take those two now again I will share with you the kits that I pull certain papers from when I first pull the papers and then once I have shown you once you'll have to refer back to my last video again I will link that in the description below and you can watch the flip through now, the other thing I wanted to show you so much to share guys so much to share I haven't done a lot of crafting while 
I haven't been videoing and as you may or may not be aware it's because I was reorganizing my craft room not finished it's a work in progress I'm okay with that I have lots of new storage in place which excites me and I have a lot of empty containers that need filling which is fabulous but I do also have a lot of resources that I haven't organized yet so I'm hoping everything has a home and will find its home eventually um, one of the things one of the very few things that I did actually manage to craft while I wasn't videoing was a little scrap basket so I wanted to give a huge shout out to Rachel from Roxy Creations because I followed her video I watched her video quite some time ago and it could have been as long as 12 months or more I just I don't remember exactly I've watched it a couple of times and I bought some resources to make this basket oh, probably a few months ago and I just hadn't had a chance to have a play and I did it I did it just a couple of weeks ago I think I don't even remember when maybe it was only a week um, Rachel has one of these that sits on her desk and she uses it for her scrap basket and I have been in love with it I sometimes think that I watch Rachel's videos just so I can admire her scrap basket I know it sounds crazy but there is just something about it that appeals to me so I had to have a play and I am in love it was much easier than I thought time consuming yes but much easier than I thought so I'm not going to I'm not going to do one on camera because I will link Rachel's um Rachel or Roxy Creations YouTube channel below if you I think I search for Roxy Creation basket or something like that to find the correct video but I just had to show you before I put my scraps in there so it's going to live on my desk somewhere on my desk it possibly will be off camera most of the time but it makes me happy and I did actually have another little basket or it was a little box actually. I ended up using it for my fussy cutting. Um, I tried using that little box for my scraps and it was fine, but it sits higher. So where this sort of expands out, it's not directly up and down if that makes sense I don't know how else to explain it the sides aren't vertical they sort of have a little bit of a, a lean about them and I feel like that will work much better so I was excited to get the basket done I was excited when it worked um, I love it so much I want to make more I want I want to have a set I don't know what I want to use them for but I'm excited about it it just I had to do one in calico because I've told you all before I love calico and as soon as I saw Rachel's that's what I thought of I was like imagine a basket exactly like that but all calico um, and I, I just love it so I may make more in the future but I had to share with you all because because I can because it makes me happy so what else do I have to share with you so much I knew this would happen I knew I'd turn the camera on and then I'd have a mental blank I meant to write down a few notes before I started the video so that I knew what I needed to chat with you all about so I do have I wanted to talk to you all about storage um, as I've mentioned, I've got my new storage in place. Now I'm thinking I just want to do a strip. I meant to check the size of the tags that Rachel made for the challenge. I f don't quote me, but I think they were about four and three quarter inches by two and a half, roughly. So... I'm thinking at least half of this sheet on this side I'd like in the white damask papers 
and then from there I'm going to have a little play with I've got to get a clean page for my glue book and from there I want to have a play with the different neutral tones neutral papers so what was I saying I mentioned to you storage and I have some new storage on some new shelving units and I need to decide how I want to use them so the the shelving that hubby made me has lots of little drawers and I need paper towel oh, that was something else I need to share with you I've shifted that I'm not sure it will stay where it is actually excuse the sound of my chair I actually have to stand up to reach the paper towel now which is one of the reasons I'm not sure it will stay where it is but it it looks kind of pretty I'll have to see if I can share that with you actually I took a photo I may be able to pop it in here so it's sitting on one of my little shelving units that hubby made me and it does have my snippet strips hanging over the top which is why I bought it into the craft space and I love the look of it but I just don't know if I'm going to keep it there I don't know if I'm going to be happy with the fact that I have to practically jump out of my chair to reach it okay so back to my storage the little drawers that I have oh I should share with you I'm, I'm going to be all over the place today I'm sorry I've got so much to share and I'm so excited about so many things so I need to share with you my lace storage now oops helps if you put it into camera so I absolutely love the way these little lace bobbins have turned out this is the one drawer that I've put the, the laces and ribbons onto the bobbins I have realized that I had meant to make some that were wider so quite a few of the laces and ribbons that I had in the piles of laces and ribbons that I had on my desk that I'd washed are actually wider so they didn't fit onto these bobbins but I have lots of other laces and ribbons in other storage areas that I want to move to this storage system so I wanted to share that with you I just love the way they've turned out okay so I also have lots of empty drawers and I'm trying to decide how I want to use them so as you saw that little lace slash ribbon drawer is quite full and well it's it's not full but it won't take much to fill it I don't think and I do have spare bobbins as you saw in the drawer ready to go um, I'm thinking I will use at least one more drawer for the laces and ribbons and potentially another draw for some larger ones maybe two um, but that also means I have to get back to making more of the lace bobbins or cards so at this stage now that I can get back to my crafting it's not a huge priority for me um, but definitely on my to-do list so I'm intrigued to know what I wanted to ask you was if you had empty drawers like that what do you think you would love to be able to use them for now I'm not saying that I would use them for the same thing and I'm not saying that your answer will be wrong I'm just interested it's all, almost like a brainstorming exercise I was just like sometimes it's really fun to have a different perspective on something that you envisage because 
it brings to light new ideas and I actually did that when I was when hubby and I renovated our house I don't know that I'm going to get much crafting done in this video just so that you know because I haven't chatted with you all for so long so okay so I have this paper here it happens to be the paper on top it's from the junk with Steph antiquity kit and I love the contrast of the white paper and the really rich dark tone of this so I want to use this next so yes when hubby and I did some renovations we we as in I <laughs> bless my hubby he's actually so easygoing like He's just like, whatever you want, dear, whatever you want to do, that's fine by me. I'm happy if you're happy. Um, and sometimes I did find that frustrating because I wanted, I would ask him a question. I would want a definite answer. But for the most part, it did give me the ability to create a space that I absolutely love. Um... And he really loves it too, by the way. So that's not a bad thing. I love this basket. Can I just say that? It's just, it's so easy to throw things in. The other one I felt like I had to, was almost like slam dunking. <laughs> okay. So, um, where was I? Yeah, so when we renovated, um, I think I'll do that. I don't very often do a sideways orientation with patterns and text and things, but well, this year is the year for imperfection. I I've taken a side step. Sorry, guys. Um, I had been watching crafters online. I think it was on Instagram, and they were talking about the fact that they'd chosen a word. I think I mentioned it in one of my previous videos as well. And I am a perfectionist, almost to an OCD perfectionist status. Um, and I, I love the crafting because it helps me... It helps me ease away from those tendencies um but I still find myself very regimented in some of the things that I do so I'm trying to steer away from some of those behaviors and I'm hoping that by choosing the word imperfection for my year ahead um it will pop into my mind while I'm doing things and remind me that it's okay to not be so fussy about things so so this paper here is from junk with steph charcoal color themed paper pack um okay so where did i start so step from oh so when we were renovating i asked a lot of our family friends work colleagues anybody i could have a conversation with really um what they would do and what they would want in the rooms that we were renovating if they were to do it themselves so um, for people who had renovated or had built I asked them what their positives and negatives were from that experience from people who like us had wished and dreamed for ever about the kind of space that they'd like to create for themselves if given a chance um what they had on their wish list of things that they really really wanted of things that they'd had in previous spaces that they just didn't like um we did a lot of brainstorming so i don't want a straight edge there i'm afraid probably doesn't matter but Ah, uh, see, I need to let it go. <laughs> let it go. Um, yes, did a lot of brainstorming. And I will say that what I had in 
envisaged as my perfect space in some of the rooms I completely did a 180 before we actually either did the renovation or completed the renovation and for some of it I don't know whether I would have ended up with what I did if I had not had those conversations with other people so I'm incredibly grateful that they were open and willing to share and I love the spaces that we've created so I find it a really valuable exercise this is Junk with Steph Vintage Music Volume 1 um, I find it a really valuable exercise to to brainstorm with other people about different things and get other perspectives because you just never know what somebody will bring up that you haven't thought about yourself so I would love for you to tell me if you had multiple drawers like the one I showed you a moment ago in your craft room what do you think you would love to be able to store in there that is today's homework <laughs> I do actually have more of those kinds of questions so be prepared because we're going to do a lot more brainstorming in the future um, because that's not the only storage system that I have that I'm interested to know how others will potentially use it I love these images. I need to tear these images out because they are just calling out to me to be used as focal points. Do I want... No, I don't want that. That is so, so fun. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to share... Well, not the other thing... One of the other things I wanted to share with you was that um, notice I didn't worry about my straight edge imperfection. In case you've forgotten or I haven't actually shared, and I only think I have, one of the reasons I, I really wanted to embrace the imperfection is because of things like that when I'm collaging I prefer a torn edge rather than a straight edge but when I've used a straight edge and I've cut things up and I go to use the tag or the pocket that I've cut I actually love it it's just in this part of the process I look at it and I go I don't want a straight edge and I don't know why but I do it all the time um and I'll see other people who craft using a straight edge and I love what they do and yet I go to do it myself and I shy away from the straight edges and I just go I need to stop doing that because well A I'm creating more work for myself um, and B I'm potentially missing out on a look that I would really really love by not going there so So I plan on going there this year, embracing all of the imperfections. I actually did that when I was, or I chose the word imperfection, when I was painting my second set of shelves that hubby made me that I've just popped in and I'd actually seen, I think it was initially an Instagram post that I saw where somebody was talking about their word for the year. And when you're painting, you have a lot of time to think. So I did a lot of thinking while I was painting that set of shelving. Um, oops. And the shelving is pigeonhole shelving so the drawer I showed you fits into the shelving and each drawer has its own little compartment and
when I was painting, I was using a paintbrush and it was taking forever. It was such a slow process because I had to get my hand in the little, it's like a little cubicle and each division is only slightly higher than the drawer. Um, possibly only two or three, well not even I don't think. Let me check. Let me check. Maybe one and a half to two centimetres higher than the drawer and the same on the width on either side. So I had mentioned to hubby with the first set of shelving and again with the second, I didn't want an exact fit. I wanted it to have a bit of room to move on either side. Some of the little shelves um, with the drawers in them in the first unit that he made me have got other things sitting in the shelf with the little drawer and I love having that flexibility so that was how he did the second set for me when I asked him of course um, and oh my gosh I love it so much I've shared I've shared a photo of I think I shared a photo of the finished unit on Instagram without the little drawers in it and I've shared one little photo of one of the pigeonholes that I've got some little jars in and those little jars were actually sitting in a little filing cabinet that sits under my desk here on my left and they were tucked away I couldn't see them and I've got them out on display on the shelving now and I just love it Sorry, I'm just flipping through these kits looking for my next paper. So this one is from John Chris Vintage 1869 Journal. Um, yeah, gosh, I love my shelving. Once I put the jars in there, I I did actually wonder whether I really wanted to put the drawers in there or whether I wanted to just have little jars instead. But because the shelves aren't terribly high, I don't feel like it would be a great use of the space for the whole set system. The shelves where I pop the jars in when Hummy made me the unit, he made it out of a sheet of, oh gosh, <clears throat> mean te uh, technical terms for building supplies, not great. Um, I think it was a sheet of MDF. To any builders out there, I apologise if I got that wrong. Um, and so the sheet was a certain width and he measured up to find out how many drawers he could get in. And there was a certain amount left and he asked me whether... I wanted him to leave that additional space and turn it into an extra shelf or whether he, I wanted him to cut it off. And I told him to leave it because it was additional space. I was like, I'm sure I'll find a way of using it. Um, and it turned out to be the perfect width to fit two of the little jars in that I had had hiding in my filing cupboard drawer. And I just love the way they look on the shelf. So, so pretty. They're glass so I can see what's in there really easily. And it kind of emphasizes and highlights them. I just love it. Okay, so this is the Junk with Def Wallpaper Sample Set 2. So, so the other thing I wanted to tell you was that with this project, I'm planning on making the tags. So I have to make at least 52 tags and potentially I'll make spares just in case. Um... But I have, I've also decided that I want to make 
some backgrounds in the neutrals to have for my junk with step design team project so in the months of november and december i worked on a major design team project for junk with steph where i worked on creating ephemera for my ephemera stash which was practically non-existent before i started that design team project i really didn't have an ephemera stash before that but i wanted one so i worked on that as a design team project and i've created myself a nice little ephemera stash so far and then i stopped all of that to organize my craft room i kind of had it was almost a trifecta of large projects that hit all at once so i had decided over the holiday period that i wanted to work on organizing my craft room and I kind of set myself aside some time that I knew I wanted to do that and then hubby had finished off my shelving so that meant I needed to paint that well I didn't have to but I wanted to and I didn't want to use that storage until it was painted so I did try crafting and painting at the same time I wasn't very successful it it lasted a short while and then the painting kind of took over um, and that was partly because I was trying to get it done before the Christmas period um, anyway so that happened and then so this is coffee color theme paper pack from junk with Steph. Um, and the other thing that happened was that I purchased from the marketplace on Viceswaps, oh, sorry, the marketplace on Facebook, um, a large quantity of fabrics that belong to, um, a patch worker who I believe has very very similar taste in fabrics and colors to myself finding those fabrics was like hitting the jackpot for me um, I felt like in my crafting in my styling for my crafting all the planets and stars aligned at once when I actually got those fabrics back home and I was washing them so that was why it, it became a major project because I decided to wash and iron all of the fabrics before adding them to my supplies um, but that was kind of great because it gave me a chance to actually go through all of the fabrics and, and really see them see what was there individually and appreciate them and I know when I was going through them and washing them and then again while I was ironing them I kept thinking about the kind of um, patchworking that this artist must have done and how much I think I would have loved it because I think out of all of the fabrics there were fabrics laces ribbons and a couple of odds and ends that I ended up with as well as a large doona cover and pillowcases which I shared all of them in a previous video I will try and link it in the description below um, there was something magical about going through all of those pieces and and seeing how much they suited my style and and the color tones that I look for and and even the patterns some patterns I look at and they're either really loud in color or print or really vibrant which doesn't appeal to me so much um, I just seem to know where my niche is when it comes to patterns and fabrics and colors and
Um, sorry, I'm sidetracked because I'm looking at different papers. So this is John Christef Coffee Lace on Top. Um, and they just ticked all of my boxes. So I think out of all of the fabrics there were, and there's like two really large baskets of fabric, I will try and share them with you in another video. I, I just wanted to get in and do some crafting today and, and chat with you all. As you can see, I'm not achieving a whole lot, but that's okay. That's okay. We're easing slowly back into it. Um, what was I saying? Oh, deer in headlights. I've forgotten what I was saying. Um, I don't know. I've lost my train of thought. How embarrassing. But yeah, I, I really think I would have loved whatever this, this particular creative would have made using the fabrics that she had available to her because they really, really spoke to me and, and still do. Like I know where they are in my craft room and I, I have little flashes of the colour tones and patterns as I'm crafting, um, which is really, really fun. So I think it's going to be really inspirational for me when I'm crafting because I know I have those there that I can utilise. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, golly gosh. Now I, I start to feel myself easing into the actual crafting. All these things that have been popping around in my little head. Just waiting to chat with you all. Oh, so what I did start to tell you was that along with making the tags, I've decided I wanted to create some backgrounds. I think I'm just going to stick with these for now and use up what I have already torn. Um, along with making the tags, which I mentioned, 52 tags plus bears, I want to create some collage backgrounds in the neutral tones only to use in my ephemera making design team project. So that was where I was going. So I had the three major projects that all hit before Christmas and all of my crafting kind of stopped, including my design team project, which I was really enjoying just making ephemera and adding it to my ephemera stash, which had started to grow and was making me really happy because I'd never had an ephemera stash before. And so I mentioned to Steph that I really wanted to continue working on that project in January. And the other reason I decided I wanted to do that was because I knew that with the reorganisation in my craft room that the month of January, January, golly gosh, couldn't even get that out, um, was going to be a shortened month because of my reorganisation. So Steph was ever so accommodating and honestly she has been so so understanding with all of my crazy i sometimes feel like i i message her and i wonder if she just sees my name and and goes oh golly what does she want now <laughs> but oh gosh i'm i'm so grateful to have had the time to be able to work on my craft room and just to get it to the stage it's at now even though it's not it's not perfect, but it's definitely in a better place than it was a couple of months ago. And that makes me happy. And it's almost like a weight has lifted off my shoulders. My, my desks were building so high with... Um, my desk was, or desks, 
desk I've got several that I use for my crafting in my craft room they were piling so high full of items that were waiting for homes or waiting for me to do things with them to get them ready to pop in their new home I've torn that a little bit with the glue book so look at me daring to be different I'm turning it upside down my text is upside down and I'm okay with that and I'm not not telling you that I don't have piles on my desk still because I'd be lying if I told you that but just knowing that there's more organization um, the things that are on my desks at the moment aren't anywhere near as overwhelming as they were just a short time ago so I'm, I'm so grateful for that and it, it really does clear the mind ready for the next project or a continuation of the previous okay so I will probably do some more of this collaging well obviously I'm not going to get it all done on camera um, and I will need to do the back of this particular sheet off camera as well I don't know whether I will maybe I'll do another video with you all with just the collaging because that's what I will be in here doing um, I may have more to waffle about who knows I'll see what happens but I do need to make some more and I also want to oh I've used those I also want to make extras to make some ephemera out of for my ephemera stash so I'm going to need quite a number I think which is fine because like I said to ease me back into the crafting and the videoing um, I think it's a really fun way to get started so and I really do enjoy a good collaging session I find it really relaxing and it's funny because oh, that was what I was going to tell you. I did actually spend some time this morning dyeing some fabrics. I didn't do as much as I hoped. It got really, really hot here. Um, so, and I had to get myself organized at the beginning. So there was more time spent preparing rather than actual dyeing, but I've left it set up so I can do some more hopefully tomorrow I'm thinking um, perhaps in the morning when it's a little bit cooler but because I did that this morning I was feeling a little bit puffed um, that and the heat had gotten to me and I nearly didn't come out here to start this but I was also excited to get out here and, and actually start crafting and catching up with you all. So I decided I should stop procrastinating and come in and just get started. And I'm so glad I did because I'm actually really enjoying just collaging and talking. Okay, I'm doing a lot of talking as well. I know that. Um, I don't particularly like that white edge there and I do have a white edge here too so just seeing if I can tear that a little bit oops I've got sticky fingers I haven't had sticky fingers from glue stick for a long while it's kind of fun
I feel like I'm possibly running out of time or getting very close to do a little bit more before I stop I think I'm just looking at how much I've done and I'm shaking my head and I'm going I really haven't done very much but who's counting really every time I put the lid on my glue stick I think to myself I'd probably save myself time if I didn't put the lid on there but it's so warm here today that I think if I left the lid off the whole time I was working my glue stick would dry out really quickly so please forgive me for the time I'm using doing that but I think it's worth it in the long run I'm going to love, love, love these background papers to start making ephemera out of. I just, I'm such a neutral person. I love the, the mix of neutral and colour. So it'll be really, really fun to play with that when we make some ephemera out of some of these collage backgrounds. funny when I was thinking about doing this this collaging exercise and using the neutrals and I was like I talk about the fact that I love neutrals all the time but I don't really know whether I I show it and then I was like every journal I do I use neutrals because well calico for instance is my go-to fabric it's it's like my second love. Um, first being my hubby. Oh, and then there's my kids. Okay, it's a little bit further down the, the ladder then. Um, but my first crafting love. Like, it just makes me happy whenever I use calico. There's something about the, the creaminess of the tone of the calico that I just adore. Um... And I was like, between that and the tea stain paper that I use, which is also a neutral, like I'm, I'm using neutrals in my journal every time I do a journal. Pretty much every time. I think the one exception to that would be my wildflower journal, which I, I did steer away from the warmer tones. And that was really challenging. I love it. I absolutely love that journal, but it was it was a challenge to not use those warmer toned neutrals when I was making it. Okay, look, I really haven't done very much, but I have five minutes. I'm going to keep going because you never know what we can do in five minutes. That's how long it's been. I, I don't even have a real sense of how long I've been videoing for. I almost needed a timer. So I knew when to stop this video. Possibly a little bit more than five minutes actually when I stop and think about it.
papers like this too are really fun because they're non-directional so when you turn them around to fit wherever you're trying to put them it doesn't really make a difference in what you see because the pattern it doesn't matter which way around the pattern is it works regardless I'll move that across there were too many too many new papers in that one spot for my, my liking gosh these are going to be pretty my papers keep scooching closer and closer toward me I don't mean to do it on purpose I'm sorry I do find the encyclopedia is a really good resource to have in my craft room because I'm often able to pick them up for free. Um, I did actually just get another supply or well I suppose it was a supply I was going to say another set but there were actually more than one set so um, and they were being given away. I think I ended up with three different sets of encyclopedias um, that were being given away at the time. And anything for free in my crafting is always fun. Not because it doesn't cost me anything necessarily, but because I feel like it's a good thing to be repurposing something that would potentially end up in the bin or in the tip. Um, creating landfill. I love that I can repurpose it and reuse it and give it new life. And when it's being offered for free, I feel like it no longer seems to have value for people. So I value it. And I really love that. And these encyclopedia pages are working perfectly for this collage in which I'm loving and could end up being a go-to for me in the future. I think that was the first encyclopedia in that set. I, I may have used one in that set, I think, but there's a whole set of them over there. So I have plenty of collaging ahead of me. So I have all of the paper that I need to do it. Oops, that little bit of white. Goodness me, that little scrap basket is amazing. It's just the right angle for me to be able to get my scraps in without feeling like it's an effort each time. No slam dunking anymore. Thank you, Rachel. You know when you see something and you just feel like it's going to be the right fit for you? That's what happened with that little basket. I felt like it was just going to be 
the right fit for my needs and it really really is my fingers are getting so sticky I'm really loving the contrast of the warm colour tones and the cool colour tones in this collage paper too. It's really fun the way it's working out. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. I haven't finished off this sheet, but I do want to keep going with it. So I'm not going to aim to finish any particular amount at this stage. And I may get to a certain point and decide that instead of making it bigger, I will stop there and start creating a new one. Um, off camera, maybe I'll do the back and maybe cut some of the tags i'll see how i go but i may pop back and do some more collaging with you because i do want to make a lot more of these so i really love the way it's turning out okay so i wanted to thank you all so so much for joining me and a huge shout out to steph from junk with steph for allowing me to showcase all of her beautiful digitals and a special mention to Romantica Arts for the kit that I'm using of yours as well. I hope to see you all in my next video. I look forward to crafting with you for the rest of 2021. I'm so excited to be kicking off a new year of crafting. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Please everybody stay safe, stay inspired and happy crafting. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.